think I'm streaming. Leave here. Close my door. Hopefully people are starting to come into the door. Okay. Let's see if this is streaming across all the channels. Do do do. Do do do. I hear I hear beeps from other places. Looks like it's still trying to sync with Twitch, so we're gonna just give this a little bit in the chat. I'll just go ahead and say hey, say hey if you're in the chat. Um Welcome to today's workshop. We're gonna do comics. I'm going to start off with just getting our hands warm and maybe what we could do is draw some things just to get our our minds warm. On, I'm going to try to show how to draw or how I like to draw um, unicorns and other fun things or if you have a suggestion of something you'd like to see me draw that we could draw together you can throw that into the chat. Um, but for now, I'm going to try. We're going to make comics and we're going to learn about storytelling. It looks like it's still trying to sync to Twitch. So I'm going to give it a little bit of time before we get really started. Let people gather. Um, but it looks like things are... Data is sent and things are streaming. So things are live. So why don't... I at least start by doodling. Doodling is fun. Let's do some doodling. Um, I'll do I'll do a derpicorn first because that's fun. I like to do derpicorns. Looks like Twitch is still waiting for for something to get across. Uh, hopefully, it'll it'll go live here in a minute. But uh. Get that chat window going. If you're in the chat, feel free to say hey. Uh, if you want to see me draw something specific besides a unicorn or something else, ask and I will try to deliver. Um, but here, so let's see. Let's make sure everybody can see the workspace here. I'm going to put this to the side for a minute, but we're going to we're going to do a derpy unicorn for giggles. Um, this is my little, I got a request for this on Twitch, so it is kind of a bummer that, oh, it looks like Twitch is now streaming, so everybody, it should be going everywhere. <laughs> if you're in the chat, feel free to say hey, um, make requests, um, but just to get warmed up and get everybody geared up, um, there's a few things, a little housekeeping things um, that you might be able to uh, get while I'm broadcasting and doing a doodle. So last night, uh, last session, I showed you guys about these templates for making your own comics. This is now available on my website. I'll throw a link into the chat to see if uh, you guys can get it uh, if you want. Uh, note, you don't really need the template. You just need some office paper and the ability to fold it uh, four times. So I'm just gonna demonstrate this got my office paper. Let's move this so there's a little contrasty kind of contrast there. You're going to fold it in half twice and nice and cleanly, as nice as you can. And then you'll see that you have this nice, ooh, look at that. I made a nice little groove there, but it's, it is what it is. Um, so again, looks like the stream's healthy. I can't really tell. I know there's a delay. Hello, Jessica. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, so we're this template is available for download again on my website, which is up in the corner over there, evanbergoon.com. If you just go to the store link, it should be available there as a digital download at the top of the page. Hard to miss. I'll throw a link directly in just a second, but I'm going to go ahead and eh, let's just get that taken care of. Small thing to do. I thought I had it in my clipboard, but I think when I closed Illustrator, it said goodbye to my clipboard, which is typical. Illustrator likes to do that. 
It even throws up a prompt saying, do you want to clear your clipboard? And most of the time, I just, out of happenstance, just hit enter to get rid of it. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope uh, if you're tuned in, uh, you're having a good time, you're ready to make some art. Um, we're going to make comics today. Um, but right at the top of my page, there's the store. And then in the downloads, there should be the staple zine template. <clears throat> and that is what we're looking for. So I'm going to throw that link into the chat. That should be a direct place to go get it. It looks like it's gone out to Twitch and Periscope and YouTube and Facebook. So if you can get it, you can get it there. Uh, download it. It's a very small file. You could print them off. Um, as many as you want, as many little comics as you want to make. Um, and again, here's kind of how we assemble it. We'll cover this again, but you assemble it just by folding in half twice. And you're going to need a stapler because we're going to, what we're going to do is fold back this little page like this, grab our stapler. I'm not seeing anything on the monitor. So I'm hoping the video is live. Um, then staple twice. And then you'll notice I made this nice little handy dandy dotted line. You don't want to draw anything up and over that dotted line because it's going to get trimmed off. But that makes you a little book. And I've put some very, very like fine little gray lines on there to give you an idea of like what area is safe to draw in. Um, but that's the little booklet. So uh, if you have a second, I would say get those coming on your printer. Um, I'm going to do a little how to draw a unicorn drawing. So if you're watching this and um, maybe have a printer handy or your computer, you're probably watching on your computer. You can do it that way. So let's, for now, I'll just warm up, draw a quick unicorn, uh, derpicorn. So I like to make a nice chubby oval. It might be hard to see because it's in pencil, so maybe I'll do this in pen. Um, I like to, to kind of have my unicorns have some chub to them. So I like to make it kind of a big pear shape and then bring in their like big, big legs. And I like them to kind of have bell bottomy legs and then really give them a pot belly because they're fun. Uh, and then for the face, I do this kind of like other circle like a little dent in it, put my horn in, drop the eye right below that, maybe put some eyelashes in there. And again, this would be, if I was doing this all in pencil, you would do that so that you have these nice ability to erase these lines. You can kind of give the hair going like that. nostrils right and you just kind of connect all this stuff up and then you go back and just clean up those lines but that's my chubby little unicorn drawing blah, blah. <laughs> that's one way to do it um all right so i think we have some people in the that are watching feel free to say hey um happy to engage with you um, let's go ahead and get to the lesson. So today we're going to talk about, um, storytelling in comics, um, and how to kind of tell an interesting story, but also that most stories out there in the world have already all have kind of the same DNA. They all kind of work in a very similar way. Um, so if I can show you get into stories. Um, so at the start of this, let's think of some of our favorite stories. Like I love, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. I mean, I have within grabbing distance, uh, A-Wing. 
So I'm. <laughs> I just built that uh, a couple days ago. Uh, but uh, I love Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars definitely plays with a lot of this stuff. So if you can think of your favorite Star Wars movie, um, that's a good help. Um, I watched a good chunk of Moana last night. I watched Onward. So I have a good sense of those right now. Um, Finding Nemo, Pixar movies generally, uh, Harry Potter, a lot of these things will all fit with this. So kind of put some of those favorite movies of yours into your mind so that when we're kind of talking about this stuff, you can see if it lines up at all with what we're talking about. Um, so a lot of people are familiar with this one. If you've ever gone to like grade school, um, this is a common way to talk about a story. So maybe you've seen this before where it's there's the beginning of the story and then rising action. There's a climax and then resolution. This is a very simple way of talking about stories. I've heard this called like the story mountain because, you know, there's a little, uh, you know, snowy peak where this climax is. And I've seen even like a staircase where, you know, you have the various different uh, escalating um, parts of a story. Um, and this is a great way to analyze stories and kind of dissect them. It's very simple and, and it's totally useful. Um, I think for a writer, this is often also how we kind of structure our stories and, and, and can take them apart and dismantle them. But when we really want to get a pattern for a story that's common, um, I really like this method. I'm going to show you guys two different methods and kind of cover them in, in a various amounts of depth. Um, this first one um, I learned about from uh, Dan Harmon. Um, it's a distillation of uh, Joseph Campbell's monomyth. Um, and uh, I think it's explained really, really well um, as a circle. So the simplest way to kind of learn about this in the story circle is that it goes around in a circle. The top kind of quadrants, we talked about this yesterday when we kind of talked about characters, that the top part is the more familiar and the bottom part is the more unfamiliar and these quadrants all have different things, but these lines are kind of points in the story, so beats in the story. And how it's kind of described by Harmon is that you have a need, so you go, you search for what you need, you take it, um, oh wait, excuse me, you find it, you find what you're looking for, then you take it, excuse me, uh, then you return having changed. And so when you think of this story circle, um, this it gives you like kind of the fundamental beats of any story. So the you is the main character, right? If you think about it, it's you know, like your Luke Skywalker, your Moana, your, um, your Lilo, whatever it is, uh, the, it could even be you, you know, like if you even think about this in the terms of like when answering the dreaded question from mom and dad, which is like, what did you do today? You can plug it into, you can plug your thought brain into, into this and try to come up with a quick story to explain what you did that day so that you don't have to just shrug and say nothing. Um, uh, so the, I'm going to break down each, each kind of part of this, and then, uh, we'll go into the other one. So again, think of like a, a movie that you really like. I'm going to use, um, uh, the, the fourth Star Wars and the seventh Star Wars as a kind of barometer for some of this lining up and maybe like Harry Potter, if there's a movie that you really want me to, um, try to plug in just throw it in the chat I'll I'll do my best to kind of help you see how it fits in there too if you're having trouble with it or if you're like oh my gosh this fits perfectly it's just like when so and so so does so and so you go ahead and throw it in the chat um, welcome to do that all right so let's talk about you the you of a story you is obviously your 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 hero right this whole thing is kind of based on um, the hero's journey um, and that's where, uh, Harmon and I think Vogler and some others like kind of helped 
I'll contribute a little bit to this this method. Um, so the U is your main character. The U is your Luke Skywalker, your Ray, your Harry Potter, right? And what they're gonna do in the U is we just need to we need to get an idea of what these people are. And so at the very beginning, they're all kind of put in what I've been calling kind of the zone of truth. Sometimes it's called the zone of comfort. I met um, a guy that likes to wear cheese on his head. It's a cowboy hat a long time ago, uh, Stephen Ritz. He's a, he's a guy that makes, um, he travels around the world teaching people about sustainable farming and in schools. And he's a really wonderful guy. It's well worth looking up because he does an amazing, um, does amazing work all over the world. Um, empowering people to kind of grow their own food and learn how about hydroponic gardens and uh, just a really great sustainable advocate. Um, uh, but he and I were talking about this and he was even saying how he likes to kind of call it the zone of truth because the zone of comfort, like our, our surroundings are not always comfortable at the beginning of a story, but we're used to them and they're true to us. Um, so calling it kind of more a zone of truth, I think, is a really good way to kind of talk about that. So what's 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 true for Luke at the very beginning of the story is that we know that our hero has, doesn't have the world figured out yet. We kind of talked about that yesterday. Um, so he's in familiar circumstances, right? For Luke, uh, he lives with his aunt and uncle, doesn't really know who his parents are. Doesn't know much about his parents. Um, I should throw these as little pictures. I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, every day, Luke kind of, what's his everyday circumstances? Like every day he's helping his uncle around their moisture farm. Um, so I'll put that in there. But he also clearly daydreams about being a pilot or being a... Um, A racer right I think he like races his like little shuttles and he's he's bored he's bored with Tatooine right Ray is very similar right she doesn't necessarily live with her aunt and uncle but she doesn't really know much about her parents she lives in a desert all by herself um, and she also kind of daydreams about a higher purpose about being a pilot or going out amongst the stars she's waiting for her parents to show up because she doesn't really know who they are what about with Harry Potter? Again, very similar, right? Like lives with uh, lives with his aunt and uncle. Doesn't know much about their parents. Is kind of in a desert, kind of isolated and alone. Um, these are all familiar. Alone is a good one. We're lonely. Um, our our character at the beginning of the story is often kind of lonely. I watched the beginning of Moana yesterday uh, on advice for one of our frequent um, uh, video watchers, um, and. Um, I would say to add Moana here, right? Moana starts off in a very big zone of truth too. As a young little girl, um, she doesn't. She has her parents with her, but they're isolated on an island. They're all by themselves on an island. They're, they're surrounded by the sea. Um, she doesn't know much about the past of her her people, um, but she the sea kind of calls to her. She always wants to kind of go out to the sea. Um, so again, like. Uh, her truth is very similar to Luke Skywalker, Rey, Harry Potter. It's very similar kind of stuff. They all want or have something that they <gasps> need, right? So they all have this need, and it, the need isn't always known crystal clear to them. Um, sometimes it's not super obvious what they need, but again, if we, like, do our Luke, our Ray, our Harry, and our Moana, right? Luke, like, clearly is, like, longing for adventure, right? Longing for adventure and is curious about his parents or where he comes from, where he's from. The same is true for Ray. <laughs> the same is true for Harry Potter. And Moana is same as true. As she gets older, she still like has this obsession with the sea. She still really wants to kind of 
she starts to um, figure out that there's more to what's going on than is being let on, even in that opening scene where there are all little kids and they're listening to the story and the dad like hits the wall and all the monsters come down off the wall and, and the paintings, right? Like that's a clue to her that like, maybe everything about my world that I, as I know it, isn't totally uh, being truthful um, or isn't exactly just the extent, like I'm not just trapped on this island by myself. Um, so that need usually takes form of um, various characters. And this go part uh, is what they call the call to adventure. So when you think about Luke and Ray and Harry and Moana, what are what are some things before they go out on their go they're called to adventure and that sometimes this is where when we talked about it yesterday we talked a little bit about um, mentor characters right uh, and heralds so what kind of comes into their life um, and this can even happen back at the need phase um, but what kind of comes into Luke's life that says hey you have to go somewhere well he those little droids come in with the picture of the princess, right? Then and then he goes and finds his mentor Obi Wan, and he finds his ally in Han Solo to help him, right? What about Rey? She meets a droid with a map. She meets Han Solo to help her and to mentor her, and she gathers friends like Finn. Harry Potter, um, owls start to show up with invitations. Not exactly the same, but it's interesting. Then um, Ron, Hermione become his friends once he kind of gets that figured out. I'm going to abbreviate to, to Herm. And then uh, you could make an argument, we'll put Hagrid here, and Dumbledore is sort of his old mentor, um, older, wiser mentor. Mo Moana, right, like, same kind of thing happens too. Um, she gets the, 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 like, that signal from the ocean, um, the little stone, the heart of the, 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 the sea, or the heart of, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's that heart stone, right? Um, she gets that rather early age. Her friends, right, there's that little pig, there's that rooster, and she actually has to go out and find that other guy too, uh, Maui, I think is his name. Um, but her grandma is sort of her mentor, right? In the very front part of that movie, she's constantly being told by her grandma to like, you know what, like, it's okay, go ahead, like, go out on the water, it's okay, like, you can use these boats. Um, she clearly knows more uh, and, uh, and is mentoring her to kind of learn more about the world. Um, Usually at the same time that you're called to adventure, though, you get ref a refusal of the call. Like, you don't exactly want to go, like, because it's hard to leave the familiar and go to something that's wildly different, right? Um, for Luke, like, he doesn't, at first he's like, I can't go. I've got my aunt and uncle here. I can't just go with you and rescue princesses. Ray is like, uh, I can't go up into space. I gotta go wait for my parents back on the planet. Harry Potter at first is like being told by his aunt and uncle that you can't go, you can't go follow in your parents' footsteps. They even like block the doors from the owls until Hagrid has to come and um, break it down. Moana, like she gets so inspired by her grandma, she ends up trying to go out onto the beyond the reef by herself. And then at one point she completely wrecks and then almost ends up losing her pig friend. Um, because she didn't really know exactly what she was doing. Um, and that almost made her stop uh, exploring uh, the world and not go on her adventure, right? Um, but ultimately they do. And when you do go on your adventure, then you're searching for what you need, right? You search for what you need. Um, at this point though, <laughs> I don't think I have much information about 
Moana, I think that's when I stopped. Um, it was right around this part. Um, I think she had just found the the uh, uh, the rock on that rock island, and I saw the like coconut guys. Um, and then I got sidetracked. Um, but you guys can help me fill in the blanks if you guys are watching. Um, so let's bring back Ray, Luke, Harry, and we'll put a question mark by Moana. Oh, that looks like the little the little camera thing. The, the, it's a, uh, yeah, anyway. So then they go searching. So <clears throat> Luke is searching for a princess on a big ball, right? The Death Star. <laughs> Ray is looking for an old Jedi. <laughs> Who and with a map for another a planet that's a big ball, <laughs> so they got to stop and they've got to stop the bad guys, right? Stop the empire, and they're stopping the empire. In Harry Potter, it's kind of the same thing. In that first book, he's um, looking for the uh, philosopher's stone. There's a riddle, but he's trying to stop the big bad, which is Voldemort. And Moana, there's like the big lava monster, I think, or, um, who we'll meet later. But then there's, um, she's looking to return the heart, right? So um, the, the magic to the heart. And she needs to gather... So when when you go out and do these things, you gather you gather your your tribe, right? So um, Luke's got his allies and the mentor in the um, thing, and they're gonna face little obstacles as they go along until they ultimately find what they need. And for Luke, he finds the princess. Uh, Ray sort of finds the map to Luke. Harry starts to figure out the dark arts professor is the bad guy, right? And then uh, Moana, I don't know. But I know that they, in that search part, right, you, you're figuring, you're having what's called the, the, the road of trials. So this is where you encounter those um, guardian characters, right? What's an example in Moana of the Guardian characters are those little fuzzy coconut guys that were super cool, right? That had like the little spears. Those guys. They're like, where? Those guys. I don't know what they were called. They were really funny though. I gotta finish watching that movie. Um, so then uh, when you encounter these little guardians, and those are those, like, those, guardians that are going to kind of stop the hero from achieving their objective or, or, or start to show them that they're more powerful than they, they really uh, know, right? Like Luke uh, aboard the Millennium Falcon is tested by Obi-Wan Kenobi and he's got the visor down and then he learns to like block the little, la uh, with his laser sword, he's blocking the lasers, um, his lightsaber. I know what it is. <laughs> and then... Uh, but ultimately, when they find what they're looking for, so Luke rescues the princess. Ray has found the map to Luke, and uh, and uh, Harry has figured out that the the professor of the dark arts is probably the one that's up to no good. Um, and then you take what you need. Um, and this one's a little tough because uh, when. You take something that you need, you always pay a price for having taken the thing. So you always have to pay for what you take. And that can be a various, uh, a lot of various things, right? Um, a lot of times in the stories, and it's very common in like Star Wars to do this, they usually have you pay because the stakes of the story are really high that you have to pay the price of a of, of friend, right? You lose somebody. Um, so in this, Luke loses Obi-Wan. 
and Rey loses Han Solo. They lose their mentors. Wait. Um, Harry, at the point at which he's reading his, or he's doing his story, he thinks, as best to his knowledge, that Ron and Hermione have sur sacrificed themselves in the riddle um, to save so Harry can go face the, the final battle, the final boss, right? Um, let's see if I can get that look better. Um, and again, I haven't seen, spoiler alert, on Moana, but I am going to guess that when Moana finally gets to face the, the big bad and try to restore the, the stone, that she probably has to pay a price for what she's, what she's accomplishing. Uh, I'm not sure what it is off the top of my head, but I bet you guys, if you watched Moana, you know. Um, I mean, I just watched Onward, and this is definitely all lining up with Onward, too. So if you like, if you watched Onward on Disney+, Plus, um, this definitely lines up with that, for sure. Um, so then you return. Um, so Luke, after he uh, accomplishes what he is doing, and Ray. Harry, I want to put her down here just because I know people are interested. Um, so for Luke, um, Luke return when you when so I'll go back to this little circle real quick. There we go. So like I was kind of saying. Uh, remember that this top part is more familiar, and that is, includes kind of familiar to us as the audience, um, and the unfamiliar. So when the hero kind of goes around this thing, and they finally take what they've gotten, so at the point at which Luke Skywalker kind of takes the princess and rescues her, Right? At that point, he knows that he can be a hero, right? He's triumphed. And so the biggest, the next, before he hits that return stage, now he's returning to that same kind of pl p place where he had that need to be a pilot, and he actually jumps in an X Wing and goes and blows up the Death Star, right? So he accomplishes, blows up that Death Star. Ray does the same, a very similar thing. She doesn't jump in an X Wing, but she helps everybody blow up the star killer base um, and she proves that she can be a hero um, Harry Potter again blows uh, stops Voldemort uh, and he becomes a he knows that he can be a wizard and belongs in wizarding school right he has found a new family so this return is once you have kind of proven that you're a hero, you return to a familiar where you're more accepted and everything that you have just gone through uh, that was unfamiliar to you is now re you return to a place of familiarity. Like, so he goes and blows up the Death Star and he comes back to a hero's welcome and knows that um, he indeed is a hero. I'm sure that probably at some point Moana is going to get back to the, the village and the island uh, with her father and they're going to have a talk about all the good things that maybe she's brought to the island, I'm going to guess. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Um, and then they're going to change. So that uh, this is the setup for maybe continuing uh, adventures, right? Luke, Luke kind of comes back, uh, and he's listened to Ben Kenobi one last time and used the Force to send the torpedoes down uh, into the Death Star and blow it up. He knows that he can be a, a Jedi, and he's going to metamorph into that next stage of his evolution, right? So there's Empire Strikes Back to follow that. For Rey, it's the same kind of deal. She knows at, literally at the end that she wants to kind of become this Jedi, and she's got her lightsaber out to Luke Skywalker, um, older Luke Skywalker. Uh, Harry Potter... We know that there's going to be another semester at Hogwarts, and he's changed, and now he's like the big man on campus that has stopped Voldemort, and we're going to see how that all impacts him and how it's changed him maybe in the next story. Um, and the same is true probably for uh, Mo 
Moana, right? We're going to get a nice look at how she's changed from being a little girl that dreamed about the sea to being a confident young woman, who, uh, or maybe even the chief. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I'm taking a guess. <laughs> but maybe that she's going to finally embrace the fact that she can lead these people and they can voyage the sea again and be voyagers. That's my guess. Without having seen it. So that's what they call the story circle. Um, what's really handy about the story circle, again, is that it's pretty easy to remember it into one nice little sentence. Your characters have a need, so they go, they search, they find that need, they take what they need, they return having changed. Um, and this thing, again, can work for one singular story, it can even work in smaller stories, like uh, trying to describe, like I said, your day to your parents. It can also work for trilogies and for many, many trilogies. Like if you look at this and you try to map this out for the entire Harry Potter book series, it totally works too. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now, but uh, you can do that for a lot of different things. So. If any of that is like, oh, this is a lot of information, here's another way to kind of look at it that's more of what they call the fairy tale or the, um, the Pixar method is another way it's called. So you can Google that. Um, this book by um, Brian McDonald called In Invisible Ink uh, talks about this method like in super depth and uh, is a very, very good book about writing and creating um, storytelling. And this is essentially his um, method for kind of breaking down uh, a fairy tale story and the same kind of hero's journey that we all kind of um, find. And I, 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 I super agree with this monomyth kind of thing because the way that we even talk about stories to each other often mimics these patterns and the mimics these beats. Um, and it's really, it's really intriguing once you learn how this stuff works and then can kind of use it as a template for creating your own stories, um, how even when people don't know about this, they still end up following uh, these patterns somehow. And I think it's just because stories are, are really intrinsically how we talk to people, how we want to talk about our days. Like even when we were little cave people, we were putting up on our cave walls pictures of buffalo and elephants and mastodons that we were hunting to try to communicate to mom and dad like what we did today uh, and those things were stories um, that were gathered around a campfire and just trying to kind of figure out how to do this so much like um, so you remember you need so you go you search you find you take until you return change so this is kind of how these things mirror each other but once upon a time we all know that right that's everything from long ago and far long ago in a galaxy far far away to our our bedtime stories um you don't have to literally use once upon a time when you start your story it's just kind of or or like the twas the night before christmas that's another good one a lot of times to get just everybody on the same page we start with Once Upon a Time, just so that everybody knows this is the beginning. I'm gonna to introduce to you the setting and the world that this is working in. Here's the main characters. And then you're gonna talk about that character's everyday kind of normal existence, right? Normal for them. Um, so again, that's going back to like what we were just talking about. For Moana, like that every her everyday is kind of doing her chores and being part of the um, being part of the royal family but then not really wanting to do that she wants to go to the ocean so she she does her 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 duties and at the same time she you know kind of looks to the um, looks to the sea right until one day so something's gonna come into their the hero's life that interrupts their day and their life and their normal every day so that it's changed forever right and for uh, all of those characters that we could, in all those movies that we just got went over that's pretty i think obvious right for moana like her grandma passes away 
and and she makes a promise to to go return the magic to the heart and set, that sets her off on a whole bunch of adventure that um, I still haven't seen at all <laughs> but it sets her off on a really big adventure um, and so that's at the core of the adventure even when you look at this like again like that even that little story uh, peak so this stuff is in that story peak right and then all of this stuff is going to be in this part of the story. Let's see if I can get that in there. Sorry. A little tricky with this thing. I don't really know exactly where my hands are sometimes. Um, so until one day, they kind of go off on their adventure because things have changed. This could be anything. It could be something that happens inside of them. It could be have something that happens outside. Um, and this is the really important part of most stories, which is the and because of that and the and because of this. And there can be a lot of and because of that and and because of this. Um, a good example that I like to talk with my students about is um, when we're talking about uh, the the meat of a story, and some like a friend runs up to you and they're like, "Hey, I just saw this movie." And you're gonna love it because like this happens and then this happens and then this and then this and then this and when people kind of tend to run up and tell us all of the little moments like that our eyes just start to glaze into the back of our head and we're like i don't know what's happening anymore i don't really can't follow this and that's because they're doing the and then and then and then and then instead of telling you how the things relate together so when i say because of that and because of this it's a cause and effect relationship. So until one day, uh, we're saying because of that, what happens is until one, so the, until one day Moana's uh, grandmother uh, passes away and uh, asks her to bring the, the magic back to the, um, the stone. And because of that, she goes out and seeks uh, Maui for, uh, to help her get the power back to the stone. And because of this, he leaves her and abandons her on the island. And because of that, and you just want to keep going in that sequence of things until you get to the ending, right? And the ending, or the until finally, which is going to be the big uh, climax of your story, right? That big little peak thing, right? That's the until finally. So that same need is going to get resolved by the until finally, right? Does that make sense? And um, let's see here. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> I can now see some comments here. Uh, I'd love to know how your tech broadcasts. Oh, uh, yeah, we can. I can get into that some other time. Um, and I'm so thankful to have so many comments here. I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you have questions about any of this or you want me to like go back over something, um, by all means, just shout it out and throw it in the chat and say, like, hey, can you revisit this or that? I missed it. I'll, I'll go back and do that. Um, anyway, where we were here before I got distracted by, by chatting, um, the, other, the other little bit here is that uh, the until finally, uh, we want closure right and closure exists in this um and ever since right so that's as they're rolling the credits in the television show and the and the kids the the characters are like rolling, walking down the street and they're like yeah we did it that's the and ever since right we just want to know that everything's going to be kind of back to normal or at least relative normal for our characters that they're they're fine that things are okay and that either there's going to be more to the story or that's it right um so giving we want to know that um, with all stories, like at the central purpose of them is we're going to watch a character change in some way. And we all are impacted by things all the time that kind of can change us in positive, sometimes not so positive ways. Uh, and how we deal with that is what makes a story really interesting. So the and ever since is really that change agent that shows us how different the character is from when they, we started at the beginning. That they might have some similarities still, but they must have changed in a really big um, way. So that is 
two, well, it's really, I guess, three different ways to kind of look at uh, storytelling. Um, these videos will persist after uh, this live stream too, so you can always come back if you need to have more time. But that is kind of the gist of breaking down a story. Um, and again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, by all means, just ask in the chat. But what we're going to do now is try to kind of get set up to tell our own story in a comic format. So these same kind of things work for um, work for comics, uh, absolutely. And I think they're really great. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to open up some of my journals and show you guys um, how what I just talked about is something that I, I do uh, in my own writing all the time. And uh, I really love these methods and I, I use them. So I've got my journal. This is one of my older journals um, where I broke down um, some of the first issues of, of B Squad, um, which is a comic book series. So this, <clears throat> like I was telling you with the story circle, um, you can use it in a lot of different ways. This is actually the story circle for the entire series of B-Squad. So I only have finished two volumes, and that's gotten us to this point in this, in this, in this circle. But then I've developed circles for each one of these quadrants to kind of help me, and then those quadrants talk to these other pages, and those pages then inform... Um, what I kind of know where I am in my big story, as well as um, where I am in my inside story. So it's informing these uh, different quadrants. Like even if you go back to um, when I go to my other pages here, this is like a rough outline for my um, the wiener dog in Hawaii story. And um, I think they all also have their own story circles too so that I can kind of keep track of like where they're all going and then these are all very small but you can kind of see how I've plotted out the different moments in my story and how they need to kind of work together and we're not going to like break this down like and have to do this right now this is all just kind of a simple way to look at um, stories for and how you know when you when you live and breathe these kinds of stories story systems, how um, they just kind of become secondhand, and you can start to like kind of throw them into your journals. Um, even for uh, my newest series, which is uh, called Tiny Wizards, I've got stuff like that. So there's like the main wizard, and I'm playing with my characters, and uh, I have. Let's see, what's a good. I don't want to spoil anything too bad, so I'm going to take a little peek here myself and see if I can find some good, good little pages here. Most of these are too spoilery, <laughs> so I'm not going to share that one. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that's these little books. Uh, I, I have mountains of these journals and. Uh, I, 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 I put uh, lots and lots of, of thoughts into these um, and kind of structure them in these very similar ways. Um, so I put, I put what I just told you guys uh, into practice in my own writing a lot. Um, but we're going to try to make these little uh, comics. Um, so I think because we all have uh, printer paper at home, um, more, more likely than not, um, what we're going to do is um, make some of these little booklets. So, when, if you, like I, I think I threw a link, it might be a little lost in the chat, um, where you can, um, let me see if I can throw it back in there. You can go get the, the, the zine um, content this template for, for how this is made and structured there. Um, and then the other thing that I've done is I've got random ideas. So if you haven't had enough uh, coffee today, which Lord knows I haven't, um, I have set up a wheel where it will let you um, 
spin the wheel to get a random comic idea. So I'll get you the link to that as well. So that link hopefully has gone out to Twitch and wherever you're watching this, uh, Facebook uh, maybe. Um, and let's see, I'm pretty sure I can broadcast. Yes, there it is. Cool. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger. So this should let you spin the wheel and see what comic you come up with um, on your own. So uh, I will take a spin here in just a second so I can make one with you guys and we can talk about, um, I guess I have this one, we'll just use this one, this is no big deal. So again, like if you have just a, a blank piece of paper, I can show you quickly how to make, make this. So um, again, I think in the chat, there's the website, it's called wheelofnames.com. So you can go there and spin um, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick, ooh, the sun is really changing directions on me, um, give you a quick primer on um, how to make this from just a single piece of paper. Let me see if I can lighten up this workspace. So you have your four, you have your blank piece of paper. You can definitely, I'm going to, this one got stepped on, but I'm still going to use it. Uh, you have your blank piece of paper, or maybe you printed out the template. You're going to fold it in half just a couple of times. You're going to need a stapler for this too, and a pair of scissors. I raised it up to nine. There we go. All right, so you fold it in half once. This dotted line is for scissors, so you want to fold more on just the straight up and half. Then you're going to fold in half again so that you get it folded in half twice. If you need time to print this, don't worry. I get it. But this will give you kind of the boundaries of your page. And we're just going to open it up at this point. Um, and then you want to set it, set it down. So you'll have basically four sections, right, because of your folding. And you're just going to write on, on the, the bottom half of this paper, you're gonna leave that nice and blank, but on, you're gonna flip it over, and then on the bottom, you wanna write a three. If you haven't printed this, and you're just gonna do this on your own piece of paper, you're gonna write a three, and then on the other one, you're gonna write a four, okay? So again, you're gonna leave that top half completely blank, but on the bottom, you're gonna write a three, and then on the other side of the fold, you're gonna write a four. It's kind of like how you can see on mine, like three and a four. If you want to make these boxes, you can totally make those boxes too. Like that, that can be helpful. Okay, then we're going to turn it over. We're going to write a five and a two. So five on the left, two on the right. And that should match up with our, our four and our three on the other side, right? So it should just be a clean flip over. One flip, five, two. Then we're gonna rotate it around. And then there you're gonna write one and you're gonna write six. And that should give you the layout. Then you can fold that back in half and then in half again. And then that has, you've got basically what you have there is a, a little book. And then the top line is gonna get trimmed off but it's going to get trimmed off after we staple. But for the starting of all of this, we're going to just leave it unassembled for now. Okay. We know where our boundaries are on our page. We know what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and spin that wheel. So I'm going to do screen sharing again. And I'm going to click the spin. Let's see what I get. Do, do, do. Big money, big money, big money, big money, big money. I think I put like 40 of these in there. So, ooh, junk food mailman. That's timely. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, so now I'm gonna take my title, which is junk food mailman. 
and you can get a random one for yourself too. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and and make junk food mailman the title of my my comic because it's timely. Junk food mailman is a good timely comic. I think I'm gonna make these letters like really chubby too. Oop. But go ahead and you know spin again. I, I I think I put in the comments section there. Hopefully it's all there. I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to know. I got little check marks next to all the little like social media icons, so I, I'm guessing they're there and they're accessible and gettable. Um, let, me, let me double check. Give you guys some time to hopefully get all your things that you need. Okay, it looks it looks like it's posted on at least Facebook. Everybody loves Facebook. Uh, I'm seeing other people's comments on there. Some messy comments. Yeah. Uh, so I hope it's there. If it's not, uh, I'm, I will put this video on with some more instructions. Um, but for now, um, so. This right side of the, the the page. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So the right side, the three, the upside down three should be above. This is your front cover. This is this right sided one is your front cover. So I'm putting Junk Food Mailman, my title page, right there. And if you spin, if you spun the wheel, and you're kind of like, I don't know what this is supposed to mean, or uh, I have no ideas, just junk food. I didn't even put the K in, so I'm gonna just make a little carrot. You're gonna make mistakes, and I would recommend doing this in pencil. I'm doing it in pen so that you can actually see what I'm working on. Um, I would be doing this in pencil otherwise, but I want you guys to be able to see what I am doing um, to help help you guys uh, yeah there we go now I can actually see it it doesn't look like I'm actually able to get you guys the links that's frustrating let me see if I can drop them in um, I'll just actually open up a web page and try to drop them in I hope this doesn't break the signal or the internet, but we'll see. Um, I don't know if me looking at my own stream will just start to like make some sort of crazy Mobius uh, infinity wheel of echoing or what. I'm gonna silence my um, let's see here. Should be under my name. I'm sorry, guys. Hopefully, this will get worked out. I I think when it's when it goes to my Facebook page, it should get into the comments there. Um, and I'll check Twitch and all those things too. So that way, you guys can at least have access to this template. Um, but you really only need a blank piece of paper. You it looks like it's there. Okay, I'm seeing links. So I want to assume that the links are getting out there and that people are good um, and that they're attached to that. So I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to proceed. Um, if you can't find it, uh, you can go to my webpage. And from my webpage, you should be able to access my Facebook page or my Twitch channel. And those should have the links. Um, if you're watching on, say, YouTube, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but the comments should be commenting there too. So you might want to check the comments for those links. Um, if you are having no problem getting to like the, the uh, I like, I'm not, I have only seen 
a few people's comments. I don't think that it lets me on Facebook read comments that are nested. So, or if it's you're watching through somebody else's share, like I won't be able to see those comments unless it's on my actual page. Um, so that's also tricky and I'll try to see if I can get that figured out. But um, Anyway, let's go back to the workspace. So I will bring in the, um, the little short dooter of um, the story circle one more time. Again, you can remember it kind of like a sentence. If you can, if you can draw a circle, you just do a oops, wrong trade. You do a plus sign, and then you're gonna do an X. So it's two plus signs. You're just making a little like asterisk in an arrow, um, and it's you have a need, so you go. You search, and you find, you take, you return, having changed. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom, right? So we're just going to spend time working on our little comic from a random plot point, right? So, um, we got junk food, mailman. I'm blocking the key. I'm gonna go ahead and close the blinds and see if it can get rid of that really big bright spot. Pardon me! Oh, it's getting so dark. Junk food, mailman. That helped a bit, I think. So I'm going to put my title and then I'm going to draw like a picture of that kind of goes with the title. It could be the character. It could be a, just an object that the character might have. Um, but I want to at least get my little title page kind of nice and readable and, um, and have a picture to go with it. So I think I'm going to draw my mailman. With a little hat. I think I'm gonna have him whistling. I don't think my mailman whistles. He mostly whistle or he mostly listens to his headphones. And we wave at each other. But I don't. I wish I had a mailman that I like had a chat with. I've always I've always wanted that. But. I'm going to have my mailman with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Full of burgers. Because I got burgers on the brain. I'm having to write that whole tiny wizards thing with a bunch of Just out for a stroll. So there, I've drawn my my drunk food mailman. It's very simple. I'm just making the. I'm just trying to make make a cover. You might want to write your name. This is going to be your story. Bye, Evan. All right. So then, after we get our cover done. We're going to go hunt down where page one is, and it's right on the other side of this drawing. So um, again, like think about your comic. You want to think about uh, what that you is, right? If you're feeling really stuck, think about it in terms of your, your story and how you're going to outline your story. The you of my story may not be the junk food mailman. It may be like a hungry kid waiting at home and all they want is some freaking burgers and fries and they're waiting for the junk food mailman to show up. Maybe it is about how the junk food mailman stopped being an ordinary mailman and became the junk food mailman. There are a lot of different ways you can approach even the most random ideas. Like let's, let's take another one. I'll do another um, random idea here. Let's find it. 
I'm not seeing many chats, but I'm seeing that people are watching. Um, so I'm guessing people are following along and they're cool and they're happy and they're making their comics and they're putting the details of their um, their work on the screen. So where's where did it go? That's not what I needed. Looks like I've lost it. <laughs> so I can do it the way that I do it in every single uh, workshop I've ever done in the world, uh, which is out of this hat. So I'll I'll change the camera so that you can see my my big bearded face. So I had this hat. This actually this hat came from my wife Jessica. She went to Pakistan for. Uh, a journalism exchange program so she got to um, so she brought back this hat which I think is an Urdu hat but it's a very fashionable hat in Pakistan um, and I've turned it into my my sorting hat <laughs> for these um, ideas so this is full of um, you can see full of random ideas for people to make so I'm going to go ahead and pull out a couple more and just talk about how we can start them. So here I've pulled out four. So this first one, let's see here, workspace. This first one is the Fantastic Salad. Now I've actually seen this one uh, drawn by a lot of people over the years, and it almost invariably starts in very fantastic but different ways. Uh, not everybody just makes it about a salad that comes to life. Like that's a bit, um, that's a lot of people's first impulses and there's nothing wrong with that impulse. I love the idea of an anthropomorphic salad coming to life. I've seen it as um, a superhero that wants to make sure kids are eating their veggies. I've seen it, uh, the fantastic salad, like uh, stop dental decay. Um, I've also just seen it be a recipe of a, a, a mom and a daughter working together to make a really fantastic salad and how they all put that together. And it was a really adorable comic. Um, so really, like you could start that story a bajillion different ways, right? And whatever's true for you. Uh, Futuristic Caveman. This is another one that I really have always liked and seen. Um, a lot of futuristic cavemans over the year. Um, I think probably one of my most favorite was um, they had the futuristic caveman be like a scientist caveman. So it was a just a caveman with uh, advanced ideas. It wasn't like they had gone to the future and come back. It was just that they were a very inventive, uh, creative uh, caveman. Um, there was another one that like set them in like the Jetsons kind of world. So like it was far in the future and he was just a caveman um, that was kind of trapped in the future. Um, and that one was another like really good twist on just this little prompt. Uh, here's one more, emergency landing. That's a great one. That's got peril already right at it. Like that could be about a pilot. That could be about a passenger. That could be about, um, <laughs> that could be uh, uh, an emergency landing doesn't even have to happen with a plane, right? It could be about a gymnast, right? That's working on the monkey bars and then all of a sudden has to bail out and make an emergency landing. And that could be full of high stakes drama uh, for that Olympic gold medalist. Um, landing, uh, you, you can play with this in as many ways as you want. Like you could definitely make it about um, doctors and nurses, like having to, deal with patients aboard an airplane. You could even do it in a helicopter. You could do it, well, there are a lot of things that need to land in an emergency, right? Maybe it's people that live on paper airplanes. Um, the sloth in the Starbucks. This is one of my all time favorites because it almost always goes really, really wacky. Um, I can't believe I pulled this one out of the hat because um, these are all very different. But sloth in the Starbucks, a lot of times, uh, the way that this one works out is that a uh, sloth, which you know is like usually a pretty slow, lazy animal, uh, goes and gets coffee for the first time. Uh, but I've also seen it as uh, the, the the Starbucks uh, trying to sell coffee to a sloth who really just has no need for it, like they're fine. So it, the story was more about the Starbucks than the sloth. Um, it was very, like, you can, again, like, you can play with these in a million different ways. I've also seen, like, heavily caffeinated sloths doing 
fast and they like turn into the flash and they move really fast and uh, gobble up all of the jungles of Costa Rica, like stuff like that. It's been really, really exciting and fun. So again, like just play with your idea for a little while. This is what your head is hopefully doing. Your brain's doing the work as you're making your cover and it's going like, oh yeah, I could, I could, I could try it that way or I can try it this way. And then you get your U, and then you draw your U on this page. Then you try to sort out, you find that number two, you put the, put the need on that second page. Then you're going to turn it over. You're going to give that go for the third page, right? I think I keep blocking the camera. Um, and you might need to start to realize that some of these things are going to have to happen on the same page. You don't have to break these things down into panels unless you want to, you can. Uh, but you're when, when, <clears throat> when you actually, when uh, professional comic artists uh, usually make their comics, they usually make them on gigantic pieces of paper. So, you know, this is, this is a standard size. You can see how big this is. Like, this is my head. Um, so comics, when you do the artwork and you make panels, you're usually doing them on much, much, much bigger pieces of paper than uh, a corner of an, uh, an eight and a half by 11 uh, piece of paper. So give yourself a little bit of, of a break and really think about like, I don't have to make panels if you want to make panels, which again, that's individual pictures. Um, that's great. Like you can totally do that. Um, if you want to, uh, if you want to make, uh, I would just recommend like don't go too much over three panels, um, and that's really actually a good tip even for your big pages. Like when you're writing scripts, uh, six panels is once you start to get over six panels, unless you're doing something that's really, really like, uh, you got to be careful about that. Um, I used to be have a really bad habit of going like crazy and like being like eight pan eight panels nine panels like that that stuff it can get really bonkers and burn out um, your own hand as well as your your collaborator um, really quick. So um, just think of think of this. We have we have our cover. We have one two. We only have six pages, right? inside but we have eight eight segments so how are we going to take just like when we did the knock knock jokes earlier this week what what things you might be able to cram into page one your need and the you like introducing your first character and what they need like for junk food mailman if i had that hungry kid well i already know he needs food and he's a hungry bored kid right boom that could be page one right Page two might be bringing that mailman into the into the picture, uh, introducing some new characters. Maybe it's even a sister that's like, "Why don't you just call junk food mailman?" Um, I don't do voices. <laughs> uh, and then um, you know, so I think spending a little time and trying to budget out what you're going to do for your big finale and how you're going to do that. You might plot it out ahead of time like this and then bring that into your your little mini comic but um i think i'm going to save junk food mailman for now and um, if you guys need any resources or you want a little more um want another look over the, the the method for storytelling these various methods like i'm more than happy to send you links um, the templates are available on my website for free. I'll also be making like little booklets like this um, over the weekend uh, to make downloadable and you can print them out and have them handy with you. Um, so you, you can kind of explore these uh, ideas uh, with your little handy comic and practice making these comics. I'm going to show that real quick before I go, um, how to finalize your comic. So if you do end up making a comic, please share it with me. I love seeing them. Um, it means the world to me to see them. So um, when you have finished your little comic, so you've finished Junk Food Mailman or whatever idea you have, 
you're going to take uh, the cover. You might want to use the back cover to do this, just because like back cover is usually a little less interesting. And you're just going to curl it like a wave uh, towards the middle of the, the book. You can do that. It's probably best if you do it with the front cover facing. So I guess it's like this. Hopefully, You're folding it. You're not totally folding it. You're just curling it so that it's right at the edge. And that's so that the stapler can kind of tuck in there. If you have a long arm stapler, like great, that's good for you. Um, and then you're just going to staple along that fold line as precise as you can. And what that will do is give you the stapled booklet. And then you can, you can find your scissors. And if you've downloaded the template, it's already there for you, the little dashed line, but you're just going to cut off the tiniest little tip of the top of your booklet. And then when you've done that, uh, it lets you open to each page. And I recommend doing all of this in pencil and then deciding if you want to bring it with ink. Obviously on standard printer paper, like it's pretty translucent, so you're gonna get a little bit of uh, over, over, you know, you can see through, and you may or may not like that. So doing it in pencil might be the great first. And if you wanna make multiple copies, like the best thing in the world to do is to not cut it totally and just make double-sided copies, as many as you want, and then send these out to your friends. Um, make a bunch of little books and send ones out to your friends, somebody who maybe is bored at home and it's like I need I need something to laugh at send them a little weird comic that you made did anybody get like a really good idea out of their um, I hope you did I hope you got a good fun random idea in that wheel I think that link uh, will stay active for at least like a while I don't know how long but the last one is still running so um, that random wheel of ideas will be there for you if you need to make another comic uh, should be for a while and if you if you need a random idea you can hit me up on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you follow me um, and with that I think uh, we kind of hit our um, hour and 15 minutes of, of <clears throat> listening to me talk uh, so I hope you had a good time I hope you get to get make new comics um, Saturday I'm gonna be doing another stream at 2 uh, that stream will likely, if the weather holds up, I'm going to teach um, what you'll want to do in terms of supplies is you want to get some masking tape. Um, the masking tape, we're going to go outside and we're going to find a nice little piece of uh, sidewalk and we're going to make some patterned sidewalk murals. Um, so I'll show you guys some basic patterns uh, to help decorate your sidewalks. If the weather doesn't hold up, I'm going to teach sculptural tape art um, and just the basics of that on Saturday. Um, and then uh, I'll post uh, on Sunday, I'll post the links and the subject matter for the next set of uh, workshops for Tuesday, uh, probably Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday uh, at 2. So same schedule. Um, but we'll do some more weird art activities as well as some more comics and maybe we'll even revisit uh, some of the comics that we worked on. So hopefully you guys will have shared some of these with me or maybe you have some questions and we'll do some um, chat and other good fun stuff to try to make some more fun comics and maybe we'll do some drawing. We'll see. I'll have to think about it. All right. Hopefully everybody has had a good time. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you do want to support these workshops, it's up and over in the corner there. Um, I, oh, it's not on the screen at all. Hmm. Oh, I know why. Well, anyway, you can, help, you can help me help me with a little donation or uh, let's pay what you want. So I don't expect anything, but uh, if you if you had a good time and this was valuable to you, please feel free to uh, chip in or buy my books, uh, anything, whatever you want. They'll all get shipped to you. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much, and we'll, we'll see you guys uh, for Sidewalk Saturday or Tape Art Weekend. We'll see one way or the other. All right.
Have a good night.